It's the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show, brought to you by Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and SRI Supply. Here's tonight's Speed 77 Radio Race Chaser Online Crew Chief, Tom Baker. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday night of motorsports conversation here on the Performance Motorsports Network. We call it Thursday Night Thunder, otherwise known as the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show. Welcome to all of you. Hope that you are ready for some fast-paced coverage. We are live on location at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, where this weekend... The Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals are taking place at the dirt track, and we have got all kinds of good stuff going on. Yeah, we do, Tom. Look at you. You got the name of the event right on the first try. I- I'm reading the page in front of me here. That's You know, it helps to have notes. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, I should introduce my partners at the rectangular table for this evening. <laughs> We're not at the round table. It's a rectangular table, just so you get the right visual in your head. Jacob Seelman, the managing editor of RacechaserOnline.com, is live here with me uh, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We also have in in the PMN studios, we have Stephen Ovens, our Northeast Dirt correspondent and the co-host of Turn 5 Live, which is our dirt track show on Tuesday nights here on the Performance Motorsports Network. And we have our Northeast Race Chaser Online correspondent and assistant editor, Kyle Magda, with us as well. Guys, we have a busy show. Jacob, I'm going to start with you. A lot of stuff going on that we want to talk about here from the World Final. But before we get to that, let's update the fans on what's going on in the NASCAR side of things because the appeals board or appellate board, if you want to be proper about it, has ruled and Matt Kenseth will officially sit out the next two races at Texas and Phoenix before returning at Homestead. Strike three, you're out of here, Mr. Kenseth. Uh, And just to clarify, strike one was dumping Joey Logano at Martinsville. Strike two was at 9 a.m. this morning when the first three-man National Motorsports Appeals panel upheld the suspension. Strike three came about two hours ago when uh, uh, final appeals officer Brian Moss said, yeah, this ain't going to fly you're going to sit for a couple of weeks, Matt. So that's exactly what's happening. We do know Eric Jones will be behind the wheel of the number 20 this weekend at Texas. A determination for Phoenix has not yet been made. But the only good thing to come out of today's appeal process or the final appeals process, if you will, was that Brian Moss did reduce the probationary period for Kenseth from six months from the date of infraction to the end of the calendar year. So Matt's going to have a clean slate when we get to Daytona Speed Weeks in February. But right now, he sits on the couch for the next two weeks. Kyle Magda, you were not a fan of this decision. I am on the opposite side of the fence. I will argue my case momentarily, but first, you may speak. Yeah, I know uh, I was talking to you earlier today. I was fired up and I said it on. Uh, Monday night, I did not agree with this penalty, and I'll tell you why. I think right now that what Matt Kenseth was given and what Danica Patrick was given, very inconsistent. I think at least give Matt Kenseth probation and maybe give him a 25, dock him 25 points. I just don't agree with that because when I look at these these previous cases, you look at Boyer Gordon, you look at uh, you know Kyle Busch at Texas. Now the thing, and I know Kyle said it's all about the name on the door. I mean. Uh, and honestly, I think in, in this situation, it was Joey Logano, um, you know, on the other side instead of Matt Kenseth the role reversal. I really think everyone would be screaming suspension uh, for for Joey Logano. But I think you know, with the Kyle Busch thing a couple of years ago, I think I, I see why NASCAR did that because you, know, you had a guy who was just coming down into the truck series, just racing for a win, and then he winds up taking out a championship contend- contender in another series. So I, I think with that. Um, thing right there yeah I mean that's that's kind of the thing but yeah I just I, I just don't agree with this penalty I don't think you know I, I think what Joey did I think you know the, the weeks afterwards 
um, you know, the brake check at Talladega on pit road. And then um, what he said after the race of Kansas, I really think it was just, it was precipitating, honestly, because I think it was just getting more and more, um, just starting to boil up. And then, you know, you hit a breaking point and, um, you know, it just is what it is. And Matt Kenseth uh, winds up being the first driver ever in NASCAR's history to be suspended from an on-track incident. I'm pretty sure that is, that is the no, 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 the first driver in NASCAR history to be suspended for, from for an, an on-track, on-track incident in, in a, a cup, cup race. race. Cup race. Certainly that, not well, the first one to be suspended. Well, yeah, Kyle. Okay, Bush, so yeah. so before, before uh, Jacob and I will offer our thoughts in a moment, but let's bring in Steve Ovens, because although Steve is our dirt track specialist, he certainly uh, is well-rounded enough to be able to speak on most forms of auto racing. Steve, I'm I'm curious what uh, your two cents is on this whole thing. Uh, ju- just to just not, to e- give not, e- not even five minutes in, not even five minutes into the show, and we're making round jokes here at the at the Ooh, round table. Wow, today. Um, <laughs> rectangular uh, no, I, table <laughs> for us. Actually, I guess when you're you still re- at the round rectangular. Table. When you said re- rectangular table, I think that was the first time I hadn't been referred to as round, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, First We're things first, I, I'm going to I'm going to go off of something that Kyle said. I know Kyle was looking for probation. Probation is a joke <laughs> in NASCAR. It's a joke. It's always been a joke. It will continue to be a joke. Probation means nothing. Zilch, nada, nothing. Probation is let me it's not even a slap on the wrist. It's nothing. It means nothing. Um. It, <sighs> The, the the inconsistency is laughable in NASCAR. I, I feel like sometimes uh, guys get carried away and and we're not as well organized as we should be on the short track level and on the dirt. But then we get to see things like today and, and things like have happened from Sunday from Sunday on until today. And it makes me realize that there's not just problems in short track racing and in dirt track racing. It's all the way up to the national level. Um, I think it's absolutely it's it's awful that, you know, in, in my opinion, looking back at what Kyle Bush did, I, I mean, you, you, he took out somebody's chance at getting a championship in another series, not even in his own series. And he got sat down for one race. Somebody well, was actually who took two. out somebody's chance. Okay. Yeah, it was the uh, the nationwide. It was cup two race. because it was Xfinity and Cup, so it was actually two races. Okay, so let's even go back to Sunday, and and I know Kyle brought up Danica Patrick. <clears throat> there is unbelievable amount of audio, radio audio that was even used in a NASCAR production on NASCAR Race Hub this week, showing that there was. Absolutely, there was intent. She admitted to doing it. She admitted that she screwed up when she tried to do it the first time. And she gets a $50,000 uh, fine and, and points in the championship. But Matt Kenseth, who to this day still hasn't admitted that he did it on purpose and did not have any radio chatter won't. that he was trying. But exactly. But. But we're going to give him two races. We're going to make him sit at home for two for two races. It's absolutely a joke, guys. It's a joke. Well, listen, and this is where I stand on it, guys. A- at the end of the day, part of what this comes down to is the violence with which this incident was carried out. It wasn't just that Matt Kenseth put Joey Logano in the wall. And to be quite honest, if Matt was only one or even a couple laps down and was racing him hard into turn one and moved him up the racetrack and Logano happened to get into the wall because of it. To be honest, at the end of the day, I don't think you, I don't think NASCAR and I don't think anybody else, even any of us are really looking twice at that behind you know, besides to say, well, payback's done now. But when he put his foot to the floor and pile drove Joey into the wall going into turn one. It's not about payback. It's about excessive force. And in this sport, there is no place for that. If we're to, if we sit here, you know, and hypothetically, you know, something goes wrong with that situation and Joey Logano ends up getting hurt. Are you still sitting here saying that the suspension is unjust? Absolutely not. 
I, the way I stand on this, NASCAR needed to lay down a message to get back control of their series. I understand that there's people saying that it's partially their fault that it got to this point in the first place, and I agree with them. They're absolutely right that NASCAR is part of the reason that this got escalated as bad as it did. Brian France made some radio comments that I absolutely don't agree with, but at the end of the day, even if it was partially their fault, Tom, they had to make a stand. They had to keep this from turning into a circus, and they did it. Okay, let me see if I can do some good bullet points here. Okay, first off, I agree totally with what Brian France said, because if you look at the guy who's on the bronze statue outside of Daytona, that is the guy that's been held up for the better part of 30 years as your quintessential NASCAR driver. He's the icon. That guy did what Joey Logano did at Kansas about, what, five, six hundred times in his career? I I mean, you know, he he, that guy was the inventor of dirty driving and driving through people and spinning people out and hooking people into the wall. I love Dale Earnhardt as a person. As a driver, he was the dirtiest driver in the history of the sport. I don't think anybody would even argue that. Now, I also would would dare venture a guess that if somebody had done to Dale Earnhardt what Dale Earnhardt did to most other people at one time or another, uh, you know, there would have been absolute hell to pay. I mean, you know, here's the here's the overarching problem. You have the icon of the sport as somebody who, you know, is this southern folk hero who, you know, turned into a bad boy when he got on the track and crashed every, you know, crashed cars or spun cars. But here's the opposite side of that. You also have a bunch of fans and this is, I've been saying it all week. I'm going to say it on this show. The fans are half the problem. And here's why it's because the fans, instead of looking at these people, all as race car drivers, as human beings who could get hurt or die in these things, They look at them as heroes and villains. It's like WWE to them. And yet those same fans accuse NASCAR of turning it into WWE. Well, if you all would stop talking like 10-year-olds watching WrestleMania when you talk about NASCAR, maybe NASCAR would know what to do to, to give you the show that you want. But as long as you all keep talking like Joey's the bad guy, so he should get revenge or whatever, it, this it, it, we've got to get away from this attitude that there's good guys and bad guys. They're all racers, people. And the sooner we get a grip on that, the better. We're going to talk more about that when we come back from the break. We are live at Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals is taking place at the dirt track tonight, tomorrow night, and Saturday night. We got plenty of conversation about that, and we'll continue talking NASCAR. On the other side, you're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Voice of Motorsports, the Performance Motorsports Network. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot left, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach so call bsr today 304-725-8444 give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway that's 304-725-8444 the odds of a young girl being discovered by an industry insider while singing to herself pumping gas one in 300 million The odds of a daughter of a clergyman from Severn, Maryland, spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts. One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win seven Grammy Awards. One in 1.4 million. The odds of selling over 40 million records. One in 800,000. 
the odds of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I'm Toni Braxton, and I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Autism Speaks. It's time to listen. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Eric Darnell. This is David Reagan. Jamie McMurray. This is Carl Edwards here for RAD. The entertainment industry's voice for road safety. Want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsports. Performance Motorsports Network. And now, back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show with Speed 77 Radio's most follically challenged host, Tom Baker. Welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on Performance Motorsports Network. We call it Thursday Night Thunder. A uh, couple of hours of motorsports conversation right up until 9 o'clock Eastern here on PMN. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman from RaceChaserOnline.com with you live at the Charlotte Motor Speedway from the ZMAX Dragways Media Center is where we're actually set up to do the show. Very busy place. We got Wesley Outland uh, behind us in the next room waiting to do his show on RacingDirt.com a little bit later. So lots of good stuff happening here tonight media-wise at Charlotte. Lots of good racing as well on the dirt track. The Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals. We've got Steve Ovens and Kyle Magda in the studios as well Talking NASCAR right now, talking Matt Kenseth, and I made the point before we went to break that, you know, I think the fans are a big part of the problem because NASCAR keeps trying to please the fans, and when the fans give all mixed signals, depending on which driver it is and, you know, what is going on on any given day, it's a little hard to figure out how to how to please the schizophrenic, and that's basically what we have uh, you know, and I think NASCAR honestly looked at the Kansas situation and I agree with Steve completely that I think Danica Patrick should have been sad as well, because after all, she mm-hmm. did, she did, uh, admit that she was going to do it and she's done it before. This is, this was not the first rodeo. I think NASCAR basically, <laughs> I think they judged her on result rather than intent because, mm-hmm. Um, she, she couldn't, she tried twice and couldn't get rid of David Gillerland. She struck herself out instead. Um, but, uh, yeah, she should have been parked. I don't think there's any question about that. And I'm disappointed that she didn't. I think NASCAR would have sent a much better message had they parked both of them for two weeks. And at the same time, uh, I think NASCAR now needs to really work hard to clarify and explain exactly what the rules of engagement are. If you, because, because look, I don't want to confuse anybody that's listening to this show. I don't agree with using the bumper to move a car. I never have thought that was the way we ought to be doing it. I know we've done it for 50 years or whatever. I get it. And I also understand that, especially on a smaller track, sometimes if a car is slower, they're blocking you, you got to move them. But Joey Logano didn't need to do what he did when he did it. He had plenty of time to get by Matt Kenseth. I totally agree that Joey Logano should, you know, again, there's a black flag up on the flag stand for a reason. Just park him in the pits for the rest of the race and tell him you're done. You know, um, come back next week and do it a little better. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think NASCAR needs, if they're going to be starting to police this on track stuff, I think they need to police all of it. And we need to never have another Dale Earnhardt again, Jacob. 
All right. I want to add one bullet point of my own to this, and it's actually a thought that came it, – it's a thought that was brought up to me in a conversation I had earlier today with Tom Jensen from Fox Sports, and I think he's 100 percent right. If NASCAR wants to make sure the rules are, are, are explained clearly and apply equally going forward, they need to apply the same – rules and punishments to all 43 drivers correct i don't want it to be on a different scale if you're a chase driver than you're a non-chase driver if i agree two, if two races is the precedent now make that apply to every driver in the field and make them understand this is the way it is that's all i've got now i, I will say this um if you just spin somebody i don't think it's two races off but when you go to the length that Matt Kenseth did, exactly. because yeah. because Matt Kenseth that that wasn't a racing, there was nothing that was racing about that, and, and this is you know you can't make some of the NASCAR fans understand because they're too busy with characters, good guy, bad guy, they they're too busy with revenge. One was racing for the win, and the other one was you're nine laps down or ten laps down, and you purposely wait around for the other guy to go by you, and then you just hit the gas and don't lift till you're both in the fence. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're two very different situations. I agree that both are punishable, but I think you just need to understand if you do what Joe Logano did, you're probably going to get black flagged and put in the pits. And I'm serious about the black flag in the pits, not just to the back, park them, make a statement. If you, but if you do what Matt Kenseth did, it's two weeks, first offense, second offense, it's half a season, third offense, take the year off and we'll see you at the same time next year. Uh, you know, they've got to get stern about this stuff because if they really want to get away from the redneck reputation and get away from that mentality, and I, I hate to keep bringing Dale's name up, but he is the icon, get away from the mentality, they've got to, they've got to distance completely from it. It can't be the, any more, you know, bumping, rubbing, whatever. I mean, you're going to move people occasionally, but if you, you know, you do it like Joey Logano did it, Dale Earnhardt was an era. That era's got to end right now. Done. And I'm hoping that's the, the mindset that they're heading toward. They want This was the first shot that they fired mm -hmm. toward you know, cleaning that up completely because if they don't, then they're always going to find themselves in these situations of, you know, well, Kevin Harvick just spun somebody. What do we do? Well, you got a rule in the rule book for that. You spin somebody, you're out. You know, purposely. Purposely, you're out. I mean, there, there are. You know. I mean, there there have to be clauses for racing incidents here. Well, yes. Yeah. So, so, so if you just move somebody up out of the way, I don't think that's an issue. I mean, well, or you know, but, incidental contact. There's no reason to park somebody for that. Well, that's what. I, uh, but what I'm saying is, if you do what Joey Logano did, I think we all know it was on purpose. I mean, he he turned. Really? Him, yeah, really? He turned. He Joey Logano didn't have to do what he did when he did it. He was faster. He could have waited and passed him clean. And he also already had a win. I don't think he intended to spin him. Honestly, I don't. I think when he turned, he just turned the car. And if you watch the video, he just hit Kenseth at the wrong at the wrong place, at the wrong time of the track. And Kenseth, there was nothing that was going to be done. And then he just didn't deny that he hit him. He never said he spun him on purpose. He just said he hit him on purpose and so you know i would have parked joey but this idea that somebody can say well you know joey should have been this but matt had a right to do what he did and i got two words for the phrase driver code bomb fire okay in other words blow it up what what do we what th this driver code was it sounds like da vinci code what are we doing here <laughs> You know, we're sitting in a conference room. I can picture drivers in a conference room. And they're all wearing tuxes. It's like a Godfather thing. Denny Ham driver code. The whole driver yeah, Denny Ham. Thing. There's a good person to talk about driver code. You know, he, it, Den, Denny almost killed Danica at Daytona. Come on. I mean, really? Driver code. What's driver anyway. code? And by the way, one last thought on this. Why is it that Joe Gibbs stood up for Matt Kenseth but not for Kyle Busch in 2011? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that, actually. But anyway, I'd love to know the answer to that question. I would, but I don't. And I bet so would Kyle Busch. Yeah, I, I'd love to know the answer too, Tom. But I don't think we're ever going to get no. it. 
with that being said, yes. with, with that being said, though, if we're talking about closing the era of the driver code and moving on, what say we close the era of NASCAR for the moment and move on to some dirt conversations? I think we? we ought to. I think we ought to. Steve Ovens, we haven't even gotten to qualifying yet, but you know what? We've got a lot of storylines this weekend. Among them, a couple of champions that we know are going to be crowned a third champion we think is going to be crowned barring complete and utter collapse and close to 200 race cars all with a shot to win this weekend we know only three drivers will etch their name in the books as winners each of the two nights so my first question to you is what do you think we're going to see Friday night? And I say Saturday night for now, but I think it's going to end up being Sunday afternoon because Mother Nature doesn't look like she wants to cooperate on Saturday. I think the story that we're going to see out of this weekend is I I believe you're going to have three out of those six winners where you're going to sit back and you're going to say, huh, I didn't see that coming. Although, uh, you know, maybe we should have, but I feel like half of those winners are, are going to be guys that are going to either step up their game, you know, in front of this huge audience and, and huge audience on Dirt Vision. Um, I really think there's going to be some guys that are going to step up. Uh, you know, we do know the two champions uh, that are going to be crowned. And the third, I I know that it's easy to think that Shepard's going to lock down the modified championship, but last year's uh, subpar performance has got me saying, uh, this isn't over yet, guys. It just isn't. Well, the problem I have with that is Billy Decker's going to have to be almost perf- picture perfect if he wants to you know, be able to wrest this away from Matt Shepard if Shepard has a couple of bad nights, Steve. I mean, you're you're talking about 86 points to overcome. That is not a small order at all. The, and it's going to be very interesting to see how it all shakes out. Jimmy Phelps, 167 back, is all but out of it. And, you know, it's I think it's in the camp of the 9-H right now, but you know, like you said, it's never over till it's over. The guys I'm watching this weekend, though, Steve, are the young guys. Tyler Dipple, Max McLaughlin. Dipple almost won this race a year ago in that battle with Danny Johnson that you and I were raving about for days. And McLaughlin, I talked to him earlier today. He actually admitted he's kind of nervous about all this. He's like, um, I, I, this is going to be a little bit of a trial by fire, he says to me earlier today. So, you know, that third Hanky Baldwin car, the number six, I'm used to it being a crazy eight. but Crazy you know, six. Uh, crazy six. There you go, Tom. I'll take it. But, you know, <laughs> Steve, fun. I think this year's World Finals, at least in the Modifieds, could be the year of the young gun. Oh, it absolutely could. Uh, I, you know, all of those guys uh, are going to have – you know, a good shot to win, or they're going to be, or both. They're they've got a good shot to win, plus they're in great equipment. It's going to be fun. We'll talk more about the World Finals coming up in a moment. And by the way, when we come back, we'll shift gears from the modifieds to the sprint cars. Donnie Schatz wrapping up his seventh World of Outlaws championship this weekend. Got a chance to talk to him earlier this week. You'll hear from him when we come back. You're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Getting your child home safely. Tap your views together three times. It's just a click away. There's no place like home. But making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travel. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. How can I ever thank you enough? Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, whatever. We are your source for motorsports. Performance Motorsports Network. Attention men under the age of 35. You know what really impresses the ladies? When a guy has a few drinks and later gets pulled over for buzz driving. 
I could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. There goes let's grab dinner and a movie. Oh, I know. You drive more carefully when you're buzzed. You've proven that hundreds of times. A woman admires that kind of confidence. And you've practiced how to speak if a cop does pull you over. Slowly, clearly, and politely like, good evening, officer. A woman admires that kind of foresight. And what woman doesn't find it adorable that you call it buzzed even though the law calls it drunk? You could kiss $10,000 goodbye, along with any chance of having a girlfriend. Because nothing says, I'm a catch, more than a guy who lives in his parents' basement and calls it my place. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. Time for more of the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on PMN. Here's a man who's in great shape. Well, round is his shape. Give it up for Tom Baker. Yes, that's exactly right. Round, round, is, is, a round is a shape and rectangle is the table. Race car tires are round and uh, the track is also round. We are coming to you live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway here this evening where the Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals taking place at the dirt track today, tomorrow and Saturday, or at least we presume Saturday. Mother Nature may disagree with us, but um, we're trying. We're trying. Uh, if not Saturday, then Saturday's portion will be run on Sunday. Sunday so don't worry about it. If you're coming here and you're worried about weather, don't because Sunday's forecast is great. Just plan to stay an extra day just in case, and we will leave the lights on for you. Here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Steve Ovens, Kyle Magda, all talking dirt track stuff. I didn't get a chance to weigh in on the modified side, and I wanted to uh, ask Steve about something because uh, lots of rumors going on about Billy Decker's future. Uh, Of course, Billy, one of the top dogs in the super dirt car big block division that's racing here this weekend. What are you hearing about Billy Decker for next year, possibly walking away from the Gypsum Express team? That's the rumor that's been swirling up here in the Northeast, Tom. Uh, That's been uh, that kind of, I started hearing about that uh, as super dirt week. Uh, He was actually driving a car uh, for a team Uh, And this was at the satellite shows. He was driving a car for a team that is uh, based out of the Ransomville area. Uh, Anybody that uh, either attends or has been up to Ransomville will recognize the name Scott Kerwin. Um, Billy was driving a car uh, for that team, a Troyer chassis, uh, for some of the satellite shows. And that kind of got the rumors swirling even a little bit harder. Um, I know that, you know, Billy has a very, very busy Uh, business at home that he takes care of so you know to hear the rumor that he was talking about cutting back and and that he would step aside from the uh from the 91 team at at gypsum express you know i'm i'm not surprised to hear that because there's so many different pieces that would fit together that 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 makes sense so i'm gonna be interesting to see if maybe any of that news you know, leaks out this weekend at the world finals. I mean, this will pretty much be everybody's last, uh, last dirt modified race for, for much of the, uh, most of the competitors of the super dirt car series. I mean, that's what we're hearing. I'm hearing that, you know, Decker could, 
you know, has a, a potential team lined up to just do the Super Dirt Car Series. Uh, we've even heard that, you know, he's not going to run the series and that he's looking at a team to run just special shows with, you know, kind of almost Stuart Friesen-esque where, you know, they're just going after the big money shows. And, and when you get a driver like Billy Decker and you show up to, you know, a competitive top paying show like that, your chances of winning really skyrocket. So uh, going to be interesting to see if anything comes out this weekend, guys. I know you guys will have your ears to the ground on that one. Yeah, we will, Steve. And another thing I had my ears to the ground on earlier this week is the uh, the, the conclusion, the culmination of Donnie Schatz's unbelievable seventh championship season in the world of outlaws sprint cars this season. And we'll hear from him in just a moment, Steve, but 31 wins this year. I mean, can you even begin to put a, a, a descriptor on this season for shots? It's been unbelievable. I think that the word flawless comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, you know, looking at the stats just from this year, when you look at the stat line, you see they have 68 top 10s. Now, the impressive part to that number is 60 of those 68 top 10s were top 5s. They only finished in the top 10 eight times. The rest of that was in the top 5. That is just flat killing it out there. I mean, mm-hmm. 31 wins is going to win you a championship for sure, unless somebody else has got 32 and a whole bunch of better finishes than you. <laughs> but, I mean, 31 wins, 60 top fives, 68 top tens, you know, five quick times, but they have shown time and time again they don't need 16 quick times like Joey Saldana had in order to get it done come a main time. It's all about the trophies, and he got the big trophy. I got a chance to talk with him about it. Let's hear from the now seven-time World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series champ. Jacob Seelman for the Performance Motorsports Network. Nichols, store the site of uh, the, the preview show, if you will, for Tony Stewart Racing. Donnie Schatz getting set for this weekend's World of Outlaws World Finals. Seven-time champ has a nice ring to it. I know you locked it up at the beginning of the month, but a little birdie told me the start of this season, you guys set a, a, an even loftier goal than what it turned out. Uh, you wanted to win 40. You got 31 of them coming into this weekend. I know the rain really killed you here in the month of October, but just to be able to do what you guys have done, become just the third driver in the history of the series to win 30 or more in a single season. I mean, how big has this been for you guys this year? It's been a huge year. You know, you, you got to shoot for the stars. I mean, that's what this team uh, has expectations of. And uh, they met a lot of them over the last several years. So uh, it's going to be even fun to see what next year brings for them. Uh, it's, it's just incredible to, to think about what we've done. You know, we still have a couple nights left to, to try to better ourselves on what we've done already. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been, uh, you know, I don't think anybody realizes the preparation and the hard work that these teams go through. Uh, for drivers, it's uh, really not all that bad. You know, uh, there's a lot of security in uh, being involved with someone like Tony Stewart Racing and, and knowing he has all the confidence in the world in myself and the people that, that he surrounds himself with that work on these cars and uh, just allows us to do what we love to do. So uh, it makes it a lot of fun all around for everybody, and uh, we try to do it the best we can every day some days don't work out that way but uh man this year's just been incredible that way it's been really special and had some really special moments got that 200th win over the summer i know that was a big milestone for you and one that uh really puts you up among the greats with steve and with sammy swindell how special a night was that for you to to be able to get it done i know you really wanted to get it done at uh, cottage grove where it all started but uh picked it up one night sooner and really made for a really special celebration absolutely you know the milestones are something that you you don't really think about or uh understand until you actually hit them you know they're not something that you you set your sights on and try to reel it in uh like you're going out catching a fish so um you know it's just a, it's just a phenomenal been a phenomenal career and well guess when you're having fun it time flies so it's went by so quick uh i wish i could sit back and think about every every race that I've been able to win with the world of outlaws but i uh, definitely remember that night at at uh, Elma and, and uh, Cottage Grove is where it all started for my first one. So, yeah, it would have been cool to get it there. But uh, we take it when we can get them. You know, uh, we, were, we were good enough to get the win at Elma and, uh, you know, a great night at, at both tracks. And, 
just enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, on to the next thing. It's uh, you only get to that point by uh, taking it one day at a time and let it go on one in here, one out, right out the other. So, um, join that and see what happens next. Got the ninth Knoxville Nationals title this year as well. Nine of the last ten have seen you in victory lane, and you dominated that one. Uh, ba basically, had it from the drop of the green and never looked back. I mean, to do what you've done at Knoxville, I mean, what is it about that racetrack that just suits you? Because it's been incredible to see a driver do what you've done for this long of a period at that racetrack. Well, I went there for several years, uh, you know, dreaming of winning the Nationals and being close, and, you know, it felt like it eluded me uh, running second, and really, uh, you know, that was the wrong way to look at it. It never eluded me. It's it, You're not going to win that race unless you understand the respect of it and what it takes to, to actually – it doesn't owe anybody anything. Uh, anybody that's ever turned a lap at Knoxville is uh, going down in the history books, has, you know, had the enjoyment of being able to go around there. Like, a lot of people aren't going to get the opportunity to, so – um, you know, you, you get past all that, and you, and you realize that, uh, man, it's all uh, it's all fun and games from here. And uh, it's just been so good for my career. It's been a place I've taken well to the way the track surfaces, to the shape of it. Uh, spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to be good there, and you know, it's paid off. It's uh, it's been very good for this whole race team. The last ten years, um, you know, nine wins in a second. You can't uh, can't shake a stick to that. So we've got to stay on top of our game to try to keep that role going for sure. And um, you know. Just like you win it that day, you forget about it the next. It was the Nationals, but you're on to the next race after that. So, um, you know, that, them are the sort of things that help you win it. That's what, um, you know, that's what we're all here for is to win day in, day out. And uh, Knoxville is just one of those special places along the way that you get to celebrate uh, a bigger check and a bigger trophy and a lot more prestige along the way. Talk about Donnie Schatz from 97, your rookie year, to Donnie Schatz now here almost two decades later with the Outlaws. I mean, amidst all the accolades, all the milestones, all the races that you've been a part of, you know, looking back on where you started to where you are now, how have you grown as a driver, a person? I mean, what's changed from then to now? <laughs> I got a lot less hair, uh, a lot heavier, and I'm a lot older. Uh, but along with that, you know, you get a lot of experience, too. Um, the mental side of this sport is the tough part. It's what uh, it's hard to deal with, uh, understanding how to get beat. There's a lot of things that uh, when you win these races, Races, you win them mentally. You, win them, you don't win them physically. Um, you know, it's everybody beats to a different drum, and you have to, you know, sit down and figure out what makes you tick and and what it is you need. And that's something that I have spent the better part of two decades working on, trying to make myself better and understanding things at the right times. And I've uh, been very fortunate to figure some of that out. Still have a long way to go for sure, but uh, you know, that's the fun part about this. There's no certainty uh, what's going to happen next or what's going to happen tomorrow. So. So we have to keep working hard to make sure we stay on top of those things. And you're always learning. You know, you never you never feel like you, you know it all. You never feel like you you have anything uh, underneath you. It's uh, it's always in front of you. So if you want to get to it, you better you better keep working for it. So that's what we're going to continue to do. What's next? I mean, you've won more than 80 races over the past three years on the tour. And, you know, championships, seven of them now in total. And, you know, it just seems like you keep rolling along to the beat of your own drum as you alluded to, but, you know, how do you go forward? How do you keep pushing with this team and top what you've already done here? Well, we have a great time with each other, you know, and times change. You have to change with them. Um, you know, the rules change, times change, uh, sponsors change. You know, you all things, uh, there's always a challenge in front of you, and that's what uh, seems like the more challenges that are in front of you, the, the stronger it makes you when you figure them out. So um, we're going to continue to try to keep doing what we're doing. You know, we enjoy uh, racing with the World of Outlaws. We enjoy being able to, to be a competitor out here and be competitive and win races, and that's what we're going to try to do. You know, uh, you don't set a sight on any number of wins or this or that. You just take it one day at a time and, um, you know, try, try to do the best you can. It's uh, one, one day at a time to get to a championship. You know, today we're standing here, uh, going to enjoy a championship for 2015, but we're going to leave here this weekend, and that's going to be all be behind us. It's going to be about 2016. So, um, you know, it's just how you focus on it. This team does that very well, and uh, just glad to be a part of it with them. Well, this team's got a lot of people I'm sure that you need to thank, too, Donnie. Uh, the partners, the supporters, the sponsors, who makes it happen for this 15 camp? Uh, absolutely. Our, you know, our two, two major supporters, 
cars or Chevrolet Performance and Bad Boy Buggies. These guys, uh, as you can see right here, we're having a blast, you know, being able to be out here at Nickel Store and uh, people seeing the Bad Boys and these race cars. I mean, we've got a, had a great following. Uh, we, have, we get to have a lot of fun uh, away from the racetrack. So we have fun at the racetrack, but this is a little bit different type of fun. So enjoying it and uh, going to enjoy it the rest of the night and uh, hopefully have a great weekend here. Well, we get to call you a seven-time champ now, Donnie. So we'll celebrate that and look ahead to a great weekend and a great season next year. All right, thank you. And just for the record, uh, you know, the biggest thing about all this, I think, is the fact that, as you heard in the interview, seven championships and over 200 wins later, Donnie shot still as humble as when he started in this sport. And we'll talk more about the seven-time World of Outlaws champion when we come back right now. You'll hear this from the Performance Motorsports Network, your home for motorsports. Dad, remember that year my birthday party got washed out by the storm when nobody showed up and we spent the whole night eating cake and ice cream? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Had to be your worst party ever. Actually, it was my favorite. You never know which moments will be the ones they remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at one eight seven seven four dad 411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes on Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, this is Denny Hamlin. I want to share with you today a little known but widely pervasive neurological disorder called dyspraxia. It's estimated that dyspraxia affects between 4 and 10% of the general population and the majority of those affected are male. The condition primarily affects motor skills, but also can affect memory, judgment, and executive function. It's sometimes referred as the hidden disability because it's not immediately obvious to others that the person affected has special needs. My niece Sarah has dyspraxia, and with the proper support in place, she is very successful in school and other activities. Sarah was lucky because she was diagnosed early, Many children and adults go years without knowing. Let's raise awareness for this disability that affects 1 in 11 people. I encourage you to learn more, get involved, and support the Dyspraxia Foundation USA. Thank you. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch. Until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Let's go back to steel and aluminum stock cars and supplying the SRIs with Race Chaser Online Senior Editor Tom Baker and the Speed 77 Radio Cast. Uh, steel, what? That was just awful. Uh, well, that's close enough. I don't care. It was close enough. Something like that. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Kyle Magnus, Stephen Evans all here on the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports show tonight. Live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway where the Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals are taking place as we speak. 
Yeah, they really are, Tom. And uh, I know Steve O's all excited about the fact that we just finished up uh, Super Dirt Car Series hot laps. And we'll get to that in a moment, Steve. But uh, I do want to put a bow on, you know, hearing from Donnie Shots before the most recent break. And, you know, we were talking about how this is really the same Donnie that we saw at the start of his career, just a little older, a little wiser, and a whole heck of a lot uh, richer in the trophy department. I mean, you know, you, you said that flawless was a great word to describe their season i'd say memorable was a pretty good way too and he said they missed out on the king's royal but a ninth knoxville nationals title seventh championship 31 wins the 200th win this season uh, up at gray's harbor raceway doesn't get much better than this and i'm telling you at the rate he's going he's still he's not even 40 yet i'm voting right now he's got a shot to maybe make some noise and come close at least to some of kinzer's numbers yeah, and and you know we we talked about the fact that you know this has been such a great season for them, um, but there's he's so humble about it, and I, a it, it's it's almost it, you can just you can hear in his voice the the ice running through the veins. I mean, you're standing there talking to a guy who's won the Knoxville Nationals nine times. Is it out of the last ten years, Jacob? I mean, anybody else? I mean, you can win the Knoxville Nationals nine times. I don't know how years. you don't how you don't just try and you know jump right out of your skin it, talking about that. I mean, the it's just incredible how they're able to have the success that they do. But like he said in the interview, as soon as this weekend's over. Okay, that chapter's closed. We'll we'll do the banquet here in a short time, but th- that chapter's closed, and we're already opening the chapter for 2016. It just it never ends with this team. They're always looking forward, even when they win. They're always looking toward the next race, uh, the next week, the next month. You name it. Absolutely right. And, you know, we were talking about the action getting ready to kick off. We're a little bit behind schedule ju- here tonight just because of the fact we had so much rain in the area this week that it took them a while to get the track prepped and ran in earlier in the day. They brought out all the uh, Super Dirt Car Series modifieds to help out with that. But, uh, Steve, more important to that story was the fact that once they brought them out to pack the track, we had hot laps. And, a guy, Steve, that you were really surprised at the resurgence this season is has made a statement already this weekend. The 115 of Kenny Tremont uh, fast in one of the hot lap sessions earlier tonight. And I'm telling you, that you know, you talk about sleepers. I think you told me that you thought this team might be a sleeper earlier in the week. And I'm starting to believe it. Yeah, uh, they ran uh, group time trials for the Super Dirt Car Series and they run those group time trials to set the lineups for the heat races. Uh, so they have done the Saturday group time trials, and they've also done the Friday group time trials that will set the lineups for both Friday night and Saturday night's action. And Kenny Tremont sets fast time in time trial group number three for Saturday's event. And this is a team right here who really had a resurgence this season. They they won a, a pile of races uh, between Albany, Saratoga, Lebanon Valley, and, and two places where they go directly head-to-head with Brett Hearn. And not only did they go head-to-head with Hearn, but they, they beat Hearn on, on many occasions. And, you know, they, they had a, an excellent run at Syracuse, ran, uh, brought home a podium finish at the mile, a place that Tremont – had had so much heartbreak at uh, before he finally won his first uh, Syracuse 200 there. Uh, so they they got a podium finish this year or this year at, at the finale at the fairgrounds. And this is a team to watch this weekend because this team has had such a resurgence this season. Uh, Kenny Tremont Jr., uh, the driver, along with his father Ken Tremont Sr., um, to have to be to continue to compete at this level for as long as they have. It's just incredible, and I think it's a great story to see Tremont uh, setting fast time. Hey, Steve, can, can you believe Can you believe that I'm sitting here and I just let you say all that and Super Dirt Car not 
50 seconds ago just corrected the times for Saturday's time trials. And Tom Baker, I'm going to turn to you with this story because Kenny Tremont's time, not exactly where they thought it was going to be. It was an error in the timing loop. He puts down still a 15-second lap, but a 9.51 fast timer at a 15, I want to make sure I read this right, 15.897, the rookie. Yes, Max McLaughlin. <laughs> Quick time. Wow. Wow. There you go. So the Sand oh Lake my. Slingshot. The Sand Lake Slingshot, second. Kenny Tremont. Second. Second quick. McLaughlin, quick time. Max McLaughlin, 15 years old, how, out of how, Mooresville, North Carolina. How in about the, that? The Hanky Baldwin Number six. Crazy Six yeah. for this weekend. Uh, mud bus. Uh, wow. What do you think of that story, Steve? Oh, that, that story writes itself, gentlemen. I mean, we, there, there's, there's such a huge difference between talking about what could potentially happen with this young driver and, and, and going out and doing it. And, and we talked about Dipple last year, having done, you know, essentially the same thing going out and proving yourself. We talked about how good the equipment that Max is going to have this weekend. But like I said, it's a whole nother game to sit down in that seat and go out and prove it. And that's exactly what he just did. Well, and there is, uh, there have been some whispers already about what may be going on with Max next year with regard to running part or all of the super dirt series tour next year, Jacob, I, I gotta tell you, yeah, I, it's time trials. I mean, it's, you know, we don't want to just, you know, go too crazy right now. Cause he's still got to run the race, mm-hmm. but that's, that's pretty impressive to come out and do what he just did. I've got to say, it's not just rumors, Max. I talked to Max earlier today and he said, if they can get the funding in place, he would love to go and run the entire super dirt car series next year. You know, mo- commute up on uh, race weeks with Hanky Baldwin and go to work because he knows that team is one that they can put the car underneath him and he can go out and race it. Let's clarify. Not only did he set quick time in the Saturday group, but the Friday group, he was third overall. He was uh, the only two guys faster than he in the Friday group were uh, Pete Britton in the 21A and the 7 of Tim Kerr. He was only wow. he was a quarter second off Britton, who laid down a ridiculous 1574, but Max was under the 16-second bracket in the, Friday, um, in the Friday hot lap session as well. He starts pole for heat number five tomorrow night, and I'm telling you, I said to Shane Andrews earlier today, you heard me, Tom. I asked Shane if he thought that McLaughlin could make both features, and Shane went, uh, I don't know. I mean, is it possible? Yes. But now if I, I if, if I could walk back up there right now and look at Shane and say, I told you so, didn't well, I? Hold on. And I, I think Shane was reserved just simply because it's a big stage here. It's a tall order. We saw Tyler Dimple last year run extremely well and lead part of the, the feature event. Um, I think it was Friday, um, one of the two days, and then uh, had a little bout with the wall toward Friday the end. Night, yeah, yeah, Friday night. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's, it's a big stage. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of pressure. Um, but uh, certainly a good start. I would say Max McLaughlin makes both features without a problem. And, you know, again, once you get into the features, it's a different race pace. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to need to uh, to just, you know, learn and, and do the best he can. But certainly uh, an impressive start for him, for yeah. sure. Two more stories, one from the Modifieds and one from the late models, Steve. And I'll give them both to you so you can talk about them here and just about bring us up to our halftime break. First story for Friday with the Modifieds, Brett Hearn. We, you know, we've talked about him the last couple of weeks. This is his first race as a non-platinum driver in 
gosh, I don't even know how long with the Super Dirt Car Series. He will have to come from the tail of his heat race on Friday night. Had a terrible lap in qualifying. 17-188 puts him at the back of heat number four. And then, of course, a storyline from the late models this weekend. The 10-win season for Shane Clanton. Going to wrap up the title this weekend. First career championship for him in the World of Outlaws late models. Said earlier today, this is right up there with his brother Joey's ASA championship on the pavement. This is a proud moment for that family. Yes, it, yes, it is very much, and uh, you know, I, I think that that is both of those stories are, are, are great stories to follow this weekend. Um, I, I just again, we talked about the rumors flying about Billy Decker, but I'll I'll tell you there there's equally as many rumors flying about Brett Hearn, and and you know, I don't know that we're going to get any of those answers this weekend, but. Um, I'll tell you, for Shane Clanton, they got out to such a quick start this year. You know, all they needed to do is really just have not an excellent uh, summer and early fall. They just needed to have, you know, a decent summer and fall to hold on to the championship. I mean, they they got uh, the 10 wins, um, and they were strong every time right out of the box. I mean, when you come out and dominate early in the season like that, and then just maintain your pace all the way through. That's how you put a championship together, and that's exactly what uh, Clanton did this year. Well, it's uh, certainly going to be interesting to watch uh, but the, the late models again. I mean, that's uh, you know we got eighty six of them here, so that's uh, eighty six late models, fifty eight sprint cars, of course, all World of Outlaws, and forty five big block super dirt cars on hand. Almost two hundred total in the pits at Charlotte. If you're not here, you should be. Come on out. We are broadcasting live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's like the Bad Boy Buggies, World of Outlaws, World Finals at the Dirt Track at Charlotte. We are going to step aside when we return. We're going to switch gears, talk some pavement, talk about the Cars Late Model Tour. And we are going to hear from the Late Model Stock Champion of the Cars Tour this year, Brayton Haw is going to join us just around the turn. You're listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the voice of motorsports, the Performance Motorsports Network. In 50 feet, turn left. Why are you driving so slowly? After a few drinks, I'm taking it slow. Well, you're not fooling the cop behind you. What? Get ready to pay in point one miles. <sighs> Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. This is Paul Stanley from Kiss for Rad, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Some of us work months producing a CD, but in less time than it takes to play it, someone will be killed in an alcohol-related crash. So please don't drive when you've been drinking. Plan ahead. Arrange a designated driver. Remember, friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, your authority on motorsports of all types. Be listening for the most accurate and up-to-the-minute coverage of every motorsports activity that you enjoy on a daily basis. Be it NASCAR, be it IRL, be it Formula One, be it drag racing, be it dirt track, off-road, props, hulls, 
whatever we are your source for motorsports performance motorsports network this is joey logano driver of nascar number 22 discount tire car you know something you and i are all that different i drive a car you drive a car my car has tires your car has tires i may be going just a little faster than you each weekend but we both need to keep those tires properly inflated to stay safe so be tire smart and do your part Check your tire pressures once a month and before every long journey. Visit BeTireSmart.org. A message from the Rubber Manufacturers Association. Here we go with more of the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Thursday Night Thunder here on the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on Performance Motorsports Network. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman. Uh, Kyle Magda, all with you at the proverbial round table. In this case, Jacob and I are sitting at a rectangular table, but Close who's enough. counting? We'll just give you the right visual here. Wesley Outland from uh, tonight's post-race show on RaceAndDirt.com in here taking pictures of us. Uh, I, uh, he, I don't know why. If he would have warned me, I would have smiled and he could have had a first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> um, I, that that may be the first time I've ever posed for a picture live on the air. You know, just uh, Probably, and maybe the last, maybe too. the last as anyway, well. Yeah, let, let's let, get back to yeah, the show, let's, shall we? <laughs> let, let's do that. And to do that, we're <laughs> going to shift Wesley's gears phone. to the pavement to the pavement for a little bit and bring in the champion of the 2015 and inaugural Cars Late Model Stock Tour in a battle right down to the wire. Myatt Snyder was in the mix with this. Uh, Deke McCaskill, yeah, a big part of it all season and long but Brayton Hawes for uh the first time in his young career burgeoning career comes away on top uh, a huge moment for everybody on the team and Brayton we want to bring you out of the pits go full throttle with us welcome back to the show it's been a while but this is a pretty good reason to have you on congratulations on the title my friend yeah man uh thank you for having me on the show again and um you know it's a big accomplishment for me and my team I mean, let, let's talk about the final night first, and then you know, let, we can talk about the championship in and of itself. Because it, it was it was a whole lot of pressure on you guys going into Hickory for that uh, Saturday night showdown on Halloween. I mean, it was one point between you and Myatt coming into the night, and you know, just an unbelievable battle right down to the wire. He wasn't quite where he needed to be. You guys hit on something uh, during during practice that just seemed to work, and you were up near the front all night long, did what you needed to do, top five finish, but more importantly, finished in front of the guys you needed to finish in front of and secured it by the slimmest of margins. I mean, how how much pressure was this over the course of the night that you had to balance between just going out and racing and knowing what you needed to do for the championship? Um, well, uh, really me and my team, we went in the race with cool heads, um, really don't let pressure get to us or anything. And, um, you know, we just had to do the same thing that we did in the spring when we went there. And, um, you know, we had, we had a good race car through practices, uh, testing sessions, all that. And, uh, we, we really hit on something, uh, you know, it was a really good tire saving method of car. And, um, you know, it just hooked around the corners. I could, I could just get full throttle and just save my tires for the whole race. But, um, you know, that's, we got our pole, first pole in the in the cars tour, and then my late model racing career. And um, you know, it was a perfect time to get it. We gained that extra point, and then you know, from there on, we just we just raced our night. Talk a little bit about the season in general for you, Brayton, because I, I the the question that comes to mind is I don't know uh, if anybody could have expected when cars announced this new series or dual series as it is with the late model stocks and the super late models on the same race night every uh, event um i don't think anybody could have expected the amount of cars at each show that they had the the and the you know the response that it had and the competitive uh nature that it had um talk a little bit about your season and were you are you surprised to, to see yourself as champion not not from a confidence standpoint but just you know considering how competitive it, it is um you know talk a little bit about that um yeah definitely the cars tour series uh it's a really really good series of racing they have a lot of a lot of competition from uh you know all around and um you know they take care of their drivers and uh you know it's just really well organized and uh 
you know, it was a really good first year for them, definitely. Um, yeah, in the beginning of the season, uh, that was our goal, you know, just to get experience, get some wins, and, um, you know, overall in time win the championship. And, uh, you know, we, we got those three wins in the beginning of the season and then kind of had a little bit of mechanical problems and, uh, you know, some, some bad luck during races. But, um, you know, we, we came back and uh, we had really good finishes, uh, kept on getting some top fives, top tens. And, um, you know, we ended up came, coming to that last race and uh, we pulled it off. You pulled it off, and I know it wasn't just sweet for you, but this Hawk McCall Motorsports team, you know, it was a big moment for them as well. I mean, talk about the team chemistry and just, you know, how you guys worked together all season to be able to make a run like this possible. I know you said to me at the start of the year you feel like you had really started to click with these guys, and it seems like uh, things are finally starting to pay off for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that driver crew chief combination, you know, you need that in motorsports. And, uh, you know, me, me and Lee McCall, we, we definitely have that. Um, you know, me and my whole team, we have that. We communicate very well um, on off weekends. And, uh, you know, I try to go to the shop as much as I can, help the guys work on the car and, uh, you know, repair some stuff. Um, but, yeah, we definitely have a really good relationship. I really, really excelled this year. Um we, you know, we started get, getting that better relationship and uh, started picking up some wins and being really consistent and just, you know, feeling comfortable with the team. Um, you know, they're a really good group of guys. Uh, really wouldn't want to do as anyone else. What do you think of this Cars Tour, the way it all came together this season? I mean, they really filled a, vo- a void with the late model stock portion. You know, that, that group of cars really didn't have a touring series uh, for the last couple of years with UARA going away. And Cars really came in and kind of filled that gap this year. And it seemed like you know, a lot of drivers were really happy with the job they did. I mean, it, it, you know, not just because you're the champion, but being able to see what all they did for you guys as racers this season, I mean, are are you happy with the way all of that came together and provided you guys with what, you know, we thought was a great series that came together in its first year? Oh yeah, man. Um, it was definitely by far the best series, uh, ran this year. Um, you know, they were really organized, really on top of their work and, uh, you know, they didn't really just care about the race. They, uh, you know, they contacted drivers and, uh, you know, kept in touch with the fans and everything. And, um, you know, it's a very good uh, family attraction and uh, a very good series for uh, super late model racers and uh, limited late model racers or uh, late model stock racers. <laughs> a lot of different cars that you've been in over the last couple of years, Brayton. And, you know, oh, yeah. it makes me curious, what's next for you in 2016? Are we going to see you back with this uh, HMM team or have you got your eyes and sights set a little bit higher next year? Fill us in if you can. You know, um, we would really like to like to pursue pursue on our uh, our sport and um, you know actually get up in the in the big leagues. Um, but you know, right now uh, we really don't know what the future is holding holding for us for next year. But um, we hope it's really good things. Well, we're hoping so too, and uh, definitely looking forward to having you back on the show when you do have something to announce for us, Brayton. But before we let you go, definitely want to give you a chance to uh, give shout outs to all the sponsors, supporters, people that you need to thank for making this championship season possible. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I just like to thank my team, uh, Hot Color Sports. Um, great group, group of guys, like I said. Uh, you know, very fun to work with and race with. Uh, and I like to thank my mom, my dad, uh, my sister, and my whole family for supporting me through uh, through my whole racing career and uh, through this championship, and especially uh, my sponsors, uh, Mechanical HVAC Services, and um, Reem for all that they do for us. Well, we appreciate you uh, jumping on the show with us tonight, Brayton. Congratulations again on the championship this season. I know how big of a moment it was for you, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, talking with you more here through the off season and getting ready for 2016. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you guys for having me on the show again. We appreciate it. That's Brayton Hawes, again, inaugural champion of the Cars Late Model Stock Tour for 2015. And when we come back, we will talk about the Cars Super Late Model Tour for 2015. Cole Tim picking up the championship in that class, and we'll break it down when we come back. You're listening to the Stock Cars Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network. I'm NASCAR driver Bobby Labonte. At 200 miles per hour, many unseen dangers can arise in the blink of an eye. That's why we have spotters high above the track. They help drivers avoid trouble. 
parents need to play the same role when it comes to kids and computers. As a parent, I know the internet can take kids to wonderful sites for learning, entertainment, and fun, but it can also lead to danger. Here are some safety tips. Keep the computer in a family area where you can see it. Proactively teach your children never to share personal information online. My turn. Become knowledgeable about signing on to websites, searching for information, and using email and instant messaging. Doing so will help you recognize potential dangers. Familiarize yourself with safer websites and post that list by your computer. Like our spotters, parents are best positioned to see the dangers kids could face online and to help them avoid them. Make a commitment to keeping kids safe online. A message from Webwise Kids and Ask.com. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Travel is part of the American way of life. When we're on vacation, we keep an eye out for anything that looks out of place. <laughs> Miss your bag. When we travel from city to city, we pay attention to our surroundings. Everyone plays a role in keeping our community safe. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, be aware of your surroundings. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne. For many years, you know I've had a drink problem and I'm, I'm trying to battle that problem every single day. But one thing I don't do, I don't drive my car when I'm drinking. I get someone to drive me. Do not drink and drive. It's the stupidest thing. If you drink, just don't drive. Not only are you going to hurt yourself, you may hurt some other person and you wouldn't want that on your country, would you? A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Now back to Speed 77 Radio, Stock Car Steel, SRI Motorsports Show, and more Thursday night race talk. Here's your host, Tom Baker. Welcome back to tonight's Stock Car Steel, SRI Motorsports Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, and Kyle Magda all around uh, talking racing with you for a little while longer here, about another 45 minutes here on this Thursday night. Um, Jacob, the cars tour this year. I, th- I think it, we, it's safe to say Jacob and Kyle, uh, I'll turn to Jacob first and then we'll get Kyle's thoughts on it. I think it's safe to say that the, the success of the cars tour wildly exceeded expectations. Oh, I think so. And I think you saw that by the first couple of fields where you had 35 or 40 drivers in both divisions and I know it tapered off a little bit over the course of this season but it was really remarkable the level of competition that you had especially in the super late model division this season when you consider some of the best talents in the entire country in that class and I think it's why that it made the guests that we're about to talk to right now Uh, So impressive as a first-time champion of the Cars Super Late Model Tour. want to welcome back to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show, Cole Tim. uh, The the 57 and 15 was your mantra all season long. It paid off, Cole. You won yourself a championship over some of the best names in the business. I know we're about five days removed from it, but can you believe it still? Uh, You know, I definitely can't. You know, it's... um... It's definitely something that I, I definitely uh, have dreamed of, you know, not only this year, but, you know, years in the past that I've raced Super 8 Malls, you know. It's just been a dream of mine to win a Super 8 Mall championship. And, um, you know, it's just, it was awesome just 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 be able to do that, you know. And not only, like like you said, there was so much competition this year. You know, it was just, it was it was awesome. Just, just the feeling we had when, 
you know, we finally succeeded and we beat some of those teams that have been doing not only this type of racing, but racing Superman models for so many years. And, you know, just like, like you said, the competition, it was just, it was awesome. You know, it was fun to watch. I mean, when you stop and consider you had names like Harrison Burton, Clay Rogers, Christopher Bell, uh, Stephen Nassie, Zane Smith, I know was one of your chief title rivals in the in the 77 machine. But when you stop and consider names like that in the field and you look at your record, three poles, you were one of the you were one of only two teams to finish in the top 10 in every single race this season, win it by four points over Kyle Grissom, who's certainly no slouch in a super super late model or in stock car racing in general. I mean, you know, how do you look back on this season and, and say to yourself as a, uh, you know, a 16, 17 year old kid go, we beat the best in the business. It's got to be a really sweet feeling for you guys as a family owned team to be able to do it. Oh, you know, it definitely is. You know, um, we didn't even plan on running the whole season. Uh, we had just planned on, uh, running the first race and we ended up, we, uh, we ended up winning the race. So, you know, as as that went along, you know, everyone I'm sure the same thing anyone else would on that or anyone else that planned on not running the full season after they won the first race, you know, we were like, Yeah, you know, we might as well just we'll go try another one. And we, we, we kept running good and uh, you know, finally about three or four races into it, you know, we decided, you know, we'll, we'll just run it out, you know, and we'll see what we can do. And um, you know, we had a we had a wonderful year, you know, all year long. We uh like you said, we were able to finish inside the top ten in every race and I believe we had uh seven top ten or seven top fives in ten starts, so I mean, just this year alone, it was a, uh, it was, it was awesome just to know, you know, this our past few years leading up to this year, you know, weren't our best. You know, we were, uh, we didn't have, you know, we weren't, we weren't one of the best teams out there, you know, by far. Uh, we just, we were kind of, a, I wouldn't say a field killer, but you know, we weren't in contention to win races like we were this year, or or as fast and show the speed that we did this year, and uh, just to, to come out the way we did this year, um, and, and run strong all year in all ten races, and. You know, it was just, it, it was a boost of confidence, you know, not only for this year, but leading into next year and, you know, just knowing that, you know, even though we're a small team, you know, we can run with the big guys and, you know, it was just, it was a big boost of confidence. It was a great feeling. You know, you talk about 10 races for the Cars Tour this season, Cole, and I, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I want to ask you anyways, uh, you know, what, what do you circle as the moment that stuck out to you this season as the moment where you said, okay, you know, no matter what happens now, we have this to look back on smile and say, we did it here. Uh, you know, I would, you know, obviously, uh, this past weekend was definitely, um, it's definitely at the top of our books, but you know, I, I can't say enough about all year, you know, how strong we've run all year. You know, we had our ups and downs. Um, well, obviously like like you said, we finished um, inside the top ten every race, so that was a plus. But um, you know, I, I think you know it it would it, it felt better if we could have finished inside the top five every race. So you know, we were close. We had a couple couple of bad runs, but you know it was um you know it was really cool. You know just to you know it almost felt it almost didn't feel real when you know Saturday night when it, when we finally did it. You know just to say you know that we did it, it was it was just awesome. And I have a feeling that win had to be pretty sweet, too, that you got. Oh, yeah, it definitely was. You know, like I said, we weren't even expecting to, to go run. That was kind of a last-minute race we decided to throw together, and we thought, you know, we'd be lucky if we would, you know, finish this out of top five with all the all the big names that were going to be there. And, you know, to go out there and, and be one of the fastest cars in practice and set on the pole and win the race, you know, it was just, it was like, you know, wow, do, do we really do this? You know, like, it almost didn't feel real. Same with the championship, you know, it's just – like I said, all year long, we've just been, we really stepped up our game over the off season, you know, and uh, it really proved, it proved us this year. And, you know, looking ahead, obviously this season starting to wind down a little bit. Uh, you know, how much confidence does this give you uh, heading towards what you guys may be looking at for 2016? I mean, how big how big a boost is this for you guys starting to look at the program for next year and being able to put some stuff together for that now as well, knowing that you've got the support of a championship behind you? Oh, it definitely helps out a lot. You know, we're we're going into the biggest race of the year for Super Late Models here in in a few weeks. We're going to run the Snowball Derby, so um, you know, being able to not only go into that race known as a champion, but going into that race with with such a strong run all year long, you know, it, it's definitely a boost of confidence. And um, you know, next year we're not really sure what next year holds yet. You know, we're just gonna 
kind of play it out. I think we're just gonna might just jump around and run some big, big, uh, the bigger races of the year. You know, the, the big 300, 400 lap races. You know, just hit the big ones, and you know, we might run a few cars races or, or Southern Super Series races. We're not really sure yet. We're just gonna kind of play it out, and we'll see how it all goes. Cole, I know you ran uh, Concord here a little while ago, back in August, and um, North South Shootouts coming up this weekend. Are you running that race at all, or um, uh, are you just going to be doing the Snowball Derby, and that'll be it for the year? Uh, so our last race will be the Snowball Derby. You know, I, I really wanted to. You know, Concord's one of my favorite racetracks. I really wanted to run that one, but we just wanted to. You know, we didn't last year. We kind of had to rush to make sure we were ready for the Derby, and you know we. It was almost like, you know, we went there not knowing what, what we even had. So, you know, this year we're gonna make sure we take our time and, and do everything right so we don't have to rush it and make sure we got make sure we got a good piece this year. I can definitely understand that. And, you know, we hear a lot of drivers talk about the Derby and what it means in in your eyes, Cole, being one of the young guys trying to make a name for yourself. You were one of the ones that uh, that watched Eric Jones win the Snowball Derby a couple of years ago. And, you, you know, we see where he's going now with Kyle Busch Motorsports and and Joe Gibbs racing on the NASCAR side. I mean, for for the young guys, especially somebody like you who's trying to make a name for himself, how big is this event? event and how tough is it to be able to be, to be successful in it oh it's definitely a tough you know it's definitely tough to be successful in that race just because it's it's such a a long race it's not it's not that long of a race but just compared to normal races that we run compared to the the 100 and 150 lap race that we normally run to go from one of those to a 300 lap race you know it's definitely it's hard to to pace yourself and and know you know that you know the car might start off good on, on new tires and then you'll end up wearing those tires out and it might get, you know, it might get driving bad. So you, you got to know that, you know, you got to know what, right, what changes you need to make for the car to be drivable, but you don't want to hurt it on new tires because it's going to get worse than old tires. So it's just, it, it's really complicated for not only for me, just being me young, but everyone just because it's, it's not something you normally do. It, it's, it's a step outside of the box that, you know, obviously, if you do enough of them, you know, you'll you'll get the hang of it. But, you know, for me, like, this is this is my second year going um, to, to attempt to make the snowball derby. We made it last year, but, you know, that was that was a big step for us. You know, we had never run any big races before, let alone the biggest one they have. And, and for us to be able to make it, you know, that was that was awesome, you know, just to be able to say that we did that. So, um, you know, this year we're, we're definitely going in with higher standard, standards than we did this uh, last year. Um, we're going in. We're. I, I really think we have a shot at, at least a top five. You know, that might be wishful thinking. I'm not sure. You know, you know, you never know. Just because there's so much, there's there's just so much that goes on down there. You know, with I think there's like 60 plus cars already registered for the race, and you know, it, it's so busy and it, the the week's so long. You get so much practice that you know you have enough time to dial your car in and back out three or four times before you know what you need. So it's definitely hard. Um, I think uh, I think we have a good shot at the top five, though. I think it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Definitely should be a lot of fun, and we certainly uh, congratulate you on your championship and wish you the best out there in Florida. Before we let you go, we want to give you a chance to say thank you to those who helped make it happen for you this year, Cole. I uh, think, yeah, you know, I, I definitely got to thank Mike Smith and Smith General Contracting, Triad Racing Technologies, Hendrick Race Use Parts, uh, Red Eye Designs, SRI and Stock Car Steel, AR Bodies, MPI Steering Wheels. Just, to, I know there's a, there's a lot more than just that, but you know, there's everyone that's even helped us. You know, just come and work on the, work on the car in the shop. You know, everyone that that helped and, and contributed. It's, you know, everyone. They definitely helped us along this year. You know, they were all part of it. So, you know, I just want to thank everyone. We appreciate you coming on tonight, Cole. And again, congratulations on the title. Good luck the rest of the way. That is Cole Tim, the 2015 Cars Late Model Tour champion. And when we come back, we are going to continue talking motorsports live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway site of this weekend's Bad Boy Buggies, World of Outlaws, World Panels at the dirt track at Charlotte. Right after these words, you are listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. 
Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Media sales professionals with agency experience. If you're frustrated with your current position, unrealistic quotas, and inept management, if you're a sales machine and you simply will not take no as an acceptable reply, If you're looking for a rapidly growing company with unlimited sales potential for commissions in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, if you're searching for a high-tech, forward-looking, laid-back, but extremely professional organization who appreciate your skills and dedication, we have your next opportunity. Scorpion Radio Group is building a sales team of self-starters who are motivated. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444 or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. That's 717-749-0444 and ask for Sue. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that robs people of their ability to breathe. As many as 24 million Americans suffer from COPD, also known as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and half of them don't know they have the disease. If you or someone you love is over 35 and has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime, visit driveforcopd.org and take the screener, then take that to your doctor. I'm Jeff Stoltz, and I drive for COPD. Now, back to more with Tom and the Speed 77 radio crew. It's the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to tonight's Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show here on the Performance Motorsports Network, broadcasting live tonight on location at the Charlotte Motor Speedway where the Bad Boy Buggies World of Outlaws World Finals taking place here at the dirt track at Charlotte. And looking forward to the action all weekend long here. We've also got the North South shootout going on at the Concord yeah, Motorsports Park this weekend for um, two big divisions in action. Uh, the, uh, of course, the uh, Pass South Super Late Models in action and also the uh, Modifieds in action as well as the, the SK modifieds. Uh, and I'm sure we probably got one or two other divisions as well. Um, good old fashioned short track. Race. Yeah. Good old fashioned short track racing on the half mile. Kyle Magda, uh, you and I are both big. Well, I think we're all big fans of Concord uh, here on this show, but uh, I know you were down here f- for the first time earlier this season in May uh share some thoughts about uh concord for us it's a very unique track guys uh i did not expect that i know i heard so much about it 
And, uh, you know, I think that was a really big weekend. You know, I know um, originally it was going to be on Saturday, which is the uh, the past tour. And then, you know, the Coma Modifieds came in, then they moved it to Friday, which was re- which actually worked out very well. Uh, I really enjoyed it when I was there. You know, I think Tab Boyd was there. Uh, Joey Logano's spotter was there. It was just yep. a really interesting day because so much happened, uh, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't get to sit up in the press box. I was on pit road. But uh, I mean, I, hopefully the guy, the view was good for you guys. But it seemed like you know it was a really great racetrack. We had all good finishes um, at that track. I mean, what other track, short track, do you see that has a dog leg? I mean, you don't see that very <laughs> often. And uh, there's just so much going on. And you know, I, I really, really enjoyed it when I was there. It's probably one of my favorite, one of my favorite days of those six consecutive days we did, Tom. That was probably one of my favorites. And, and right now, it's still one of my favorite short tracks as we speak. The answer to your question is none. The Concord <laughs> is the only one that I've I've seen anywhere uh, that looks like Concord, a short track with a dog leg. It's pretty, uh, it, it's it's pretty messed up actually. But it is it is one bad fast track, and you know the North South Shootout just. Uh, one of the marquee events in this area this time of year. Uh, it started at Concord Motorsports Park, ran there for a few years, and then they moved it up the road to the north of where we are right now, about an hour to the Caraway Speedway in Asheboro, North Carolina, for a few years. And this year, uh, it's first year back at um, Concord. And so whether you're a, a fan of dirt ovals or asphalt ovals, uh you can certainly get your fill of motorsports here in the Charlotte area, or you can do a little bit of both if you want. Um, and, you know, so people talking about uh, having the two shows on the same weekend, uh, actually next year that will change because the world finals, the event that we're uh, at here now at the dirt track at Charlotte going to be Halloween weekend in 2016. <laughs> Yes, boo. So uh, it's a scary thought. So, um, you know, it's uh, actually (laughs) it's going to be interesting to have them not on the same weekend and, you know, everybody be able to take in both shows in their entirety. So that should be fun um, and uh, a great, great weekend for racing here in the area for sure. Uh, Now we talk about great weekends for racing. Let's talk a little bit. Let's do a little bit of a preview. The NASCAR K&M Pro Series West still in action. They have one more race left. The Pro E Series is done. Um, The Pro West Series, Pro Series West, in action next week at Phoenix, Jacob. And we have got a really, really interesting title fight still in that series yeah we do and i think what's big about this is we come down to three drivers within 10 positions on the racetrack actually within nine positions on the racetrack tom two of them had never set a tire in the series before this season as far as full-time competition noah gregson and grayson raz a couple of teenagers driving for jefferson pitts racing a brand new team this year and it's it's remarkable quite frankly what those two young talents have done this year neither one of them in the nascar next program which is completely shocking i would suspect next next year year, that will be rectified i I think that will be rectified but you know we we look at this title tilt Actually, four drivers. I don't want to discount Ryan Partridge. Four drivers within uh, 12 points of the crowd. Oh, wow. Is Ryan? Okay. Yeah, it's it's not over yet for Partridge. He's got a win. All four of them have wins on the season, as a matter of fact. Eggleston and Gregson each have two. Um, Grayson's been so consistent. Only out of the top 10 once in 12 starts this season. And... You know, Tom, it comes down to a battle of youth versus experience. Chris Eggleston has a lot of prior experience in the series. Gregson and Raz really don't. Partridge, this is his rookie year in the series as well. So, you know, it's one veteran versus three rookies. Only one of them comes away with it. And next year could well be the biggest field that we see in this series all season long. Potentially as many as 36 cars including two guys who really have my vote as guys to watch from out east 
William Byron, the reigning East Series champion, going to be hopping out west, as we've heard, to run that race. And Harrison Burton going to make his second K&N West start in a H. Scott Motorsports car as a teammate to another East driver, Dalton Sargent, in that race. Have I, have I given you enough competition yet? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, it's uh, Phoenix is such a, a fun track to begin with from a fan's point of view, uh, you know, to, to watch racing on because it's a very tricky track to drive. It's not one of those tracks. I mean, you'd never know it by watching Kevin Harvick there because it seems like, you know, he, he gets a rocket ship and everyone else gets a VW beetle, but, <laughs> uh, in the cup series, but, um, you know, it's, uh, there aren't many drivers like Kevin that, that, uh, that can, can drive that track like he does. It's a tricky track. It, so it becomes neutral is where I'm going with this. And it's a great place for the KNN Pro Series West to wrap up their title fight because, you know, it's a big mile track. And, you know, a lot of these guys haven't run many of those Kyle Magda. So this is a track where I think any one of these guys could pop up and get, uh, get the win and get the title. I will ask you the question of the four aforementioned drivers who are fighting for the championship. Who say you walks away with the title? Man, you're putting the tough questions on me, but uh, yeah, I, I think uh, of course, Tom, but um, you know, going back to the question, um, from what took place last time at Roseville, my gut is telling me Noah Gregson is going to win this championship because of what happened. Those two, him and Eggleston, at that track. From what I didn't see the race, I did not see the broadcast yet. From but you know, from what I've heard, uh, you know, they got into it a little bit and sent Noah spinning, I supposedly. So um, you know, I think Noah's going to just go into that race and just go out there and do what he's been doing all year. You know, he's running up front. And, uh, you know, other than that race, you know, I mean, look at Grayson Raz last week. I mean, your last race, he goes out there. Winner, winner, you know, nips, chicken dinner. Yeah, winner, winner. Yeah, and he nips uh, Alex Shutt, Shutt at the uh, the finish line. Shoot, I, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say his name. Alex Shutt. Yeah, we Shuddy, had him on the Shuddy. show. Yeah, yeah, that's, like, that's, like a, that, that's, like a, that's like a tongue twister there. But, um, you know, there's just – but, you know, you, you mentioned, Jacob, how many cars there are. We have 36 entries. I mean, there's also guys like Ben Kennedy, Kaz Grala, Landon Castle – are going to run the race as well. So there's still, I think, really? this may be the one, one of the biggest fields we see all season. I think we're going to hit 40 cars, honestly. Ben Kennedy. The, in a K&M West race. My, wow. mind, my mind is blown right now. Wow. That's interesting. It's got the, the East... Uh... The East drivers, I guess, some of these drivers, you got a truck driver, Ben Kennedy, you got a... That was from Home uh, Tracks, too, by the way. Landing Castle would be considered the Moonlighter in this game. He ran it over, Landing Castle. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, interesting stuff to have have some of those guys involved. I didn't realize they were running. I was thinking, Kyle, as you were talking about this, uh, uh, apparently Gregson and uh, Eggleston... um, that, that that would fell under the boys have at it something something, yeah, like, something that. like that yeah, yeah I, I suspect maybe after the ruling that came down today maybe the two of them will be a little bit uh less uh frisky at phoenix <laughs> but it jacob what do you think who wins the title oh wow um can i really go off the wall here on this one well, you only got four choices. I mean, I you can't pick Jimmy Johnson this time. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, you know what? I really think something improbable is going to happen at Phoenix. And to be quite honest, I think that you're going to see a major shocker for this title fight. We've seen it before, not necessarily in the K&M West series, but I think Grayson Raz is actually going to come from third to win the championship. I think it's going to take him winning the race to do it. But you talked about the feud between Eggleston and Gregson. That could potentially be exactly the distraction that Grayson needs. He's just got to focus on him. He's not going into this with any pressure because he knows he needs to win the race, and that's all he can do. If he leads the most laps and wins the race, he's done what he can do, and it only matters what the rest of these guys do. I think that this this argument, this feud, whatever you want to call it, Tom, between Eggleston and Gregson right now is a huge distraction heading to Phoenix. I think it boils over because Phoenix is a track where tempers can flare, 
And I think that Grayson takes advantage of it and steals a title away from these guys. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I'm just going to say that I think Noah Gregson is going to be really, really mad. Okay. And, you know, I I love your theory on Grayson for sure, but I'm going to take Gregson in this title fight again, just a gut, but it's going to be awfully fun to watch. It will be next weekend, one week. Not this coming weekend, but next weekend. That a week Phoenix, from tonight, week from, Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. It's actually a week from tonight as we are on Thursday night. So uh, we'll definitely look forward to that. We will. We'll keep you updated when that West race goes live. Right now, we'll take our white flag segment when we come back. Final break right now, and we close the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports show right after this. You are listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Okay, so, Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And, Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speeds, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We now return you to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. And here's the guy who lost the hula hoop contest at the last PMN summer picnic because he, well, he just can't hula hoop. It's Tom Baker. Two left hips. I keep trying to remind people I have two left hips. Welcome back to our white flag segment of tonight's Thursday night thunder pick on the host night here on performance motorsports network, Tom Baker, Jacob Steelman, Kyle Magda taking you home for about another uh, 12 minutes or so to wrap things up tonight and watching what's going on here on the racetrack. Jacob, uh, world of outlaws sprint car qualifying And got to love the driver at the top of the board coming out of retirement a little while ago, which lasted about, what, 22 minutes? (laughs) Slamming Sammy Swindell at the top of the charts right now in qualifying for the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars. How about that? Please allow me to imitate Johnny Gibson when I say quick time, Sammy Swindell. That was good. That was hey, good. I got to give it a solid shot. 12.507 for the driver from Germantown, Tennessee. We call him slamming Sammy Tom because that's what he does. He slams down 
times like this on tracks like this. He's good here. He's always been good at the yeah, World he Finals. You're right. He's been in position to win five or six of these races, has had so much bad luck. It's just one of those situations. But I keep telling people, Sammy Swindell and CJB Motorsports is a recipe for success. Sammy, like Steve Kinzer this year with Tony Stewart Racing, can now choose the races he wants to run. He has been on fire this year. He swept the Jackson Nationals, won about $40,000 over that weekend with the National Sprint League. You know, he's not won a World of Outlaws feature this season yet, but I'm telling you, they're gearing up for between 40 and 50 races next year with help from Todd Queering and the whole big game tree stands, gomuddy.com uh, camp over there with Mainstream Holdings, and they are really starting to hit their stride now in these past couple of months. You're, sh- you're seeing it tonight. I promise you, Sammy Swindell has not lost his touch. He is going to be in the hunt for another World of Outlaws victory here come uh, tomorrow night. This is qualifying for Friday night, mind you. Right. Saturday night's qualifying going to take place a little bit later. We're actually a couple hours delayed just because of all the time tonight it took to roll in this track. Because of all the rain, we had about six straight days, Tom, of rain up here in Concord. Yeah, uh, they couldn't get the arcs ready to race, so we just had to do our best with uh, – with the getting the track ready for the race cars to do it. Uh, and if you're just joining us, we are coming to you live from Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Bad Boy Buggies, World of Outlaws, World Finals, and the format, the way that this is done, they have separate qualifying sessions. We Tonight is qualification night. Tomorrow night and Saturday night is pretty much all main events and they qualify in one one session for Friday, and then they'll come out and qualify again for Saturday. That's the way this works. We are qualifying for tomorrow night's racing, as Jacob mentioned. And, Jacob, the question I put to you, because this track is so testy right now, and this is not a track condition that we've often seen here. I mean, this has been – normally it's very cold, but we haven't had the amount of rain – this time, we, as you said, we've had almost a week straight where, where it's been at least drizzling, if not raining really hard, mm-hmm. and it's about 75 degrees. So it's complete difference from what we've had in the past. Is this the kind of a track condition where you see somebody like a Sammy Swindell or somebody perhaps that we aren't even thinking about? Is this upset special potential in these classes this weekend because of the track being the way it is yes absolutely yes i'll say it as many times as you need me to say it before it sinks in i think we got it the first time i think (laughs) this is an upset special kind of a weekend you know you've got guys like trey starks in jeff mccall's number 23 yeah who was uh, in the in the low uh, 12 sevens you've got uh, Cody Dara who just got done with his qualifying run who went a 1283 in the uh, qu- the B flight for qualifying this is the second half of the first round of World of Outlaws qualifications now so you know Dara that's a storyline in itself Tom back, yeah, back with, driving back for with Casey, Casey Kane, Kane yeah. racing in the four car and th- I was shocked when this announcement came out I want to get a chance to catch up with him and I think we'll be able to do that here tomorrow Tomorrow morning when the pits open back up. You know, Brian Clausen's here in the Matt Wood machine, just went a 1271. He's not too far off of Swindell's time, which was in the 1250s. Uh, it's just, you know, there's a lot of names here. I don't know that you're going to see a World of Outlaws regular dominate like we've seen in the past here. I think this this is a track condition that opens it up for a, a car or a team that hits on the setup right, like a part-timers who know they're not out for anything except to get a trophy. And, you know, we talk about this all the time. Yes, we call Charlotte Donnie Schatz's his house, Kyle Magda, but it, not necessarily the last couple of years. He went 26 to fourth here in the finale a year ago. He just hasn't had enough to get to victory lane. Yeah, I think what was it Brian Brown last last year? Brian Brown, I yeah. What the, I forget what the winless streak was. You guys probably know better than I do. But, About um, I he, fourteen years worth. Yeah, that's that's a long time. But yeah, Donnie shots. I mean, you know, these guys are coming off of Port Royal, which I was able to go to, which was nice. And um, you know, uh, we go back there, and a lot of the, I think some of the posse are down there. You know, Cody Darrow's down there. I think Greg Brent Hodnett, Marks might Brent be. Marks. Yeah, I, I was. I, I'd expect that, and. Uh, you know, you have a guy like Cody Darrow who who did win back at Lernerville back at uh, in May, 
And you have a guy like Greg Hodnett who has won in the past, and Brent Marks who still hasn't won yet on the World of Outlaws Tour, but has won the All-Star Sprints. So, there's yeah, there's a lot going on right now. You know, it's pretty much, I guess, the World Finals is, a, is you know, best of both worlds. You know, Posse, uh, you know, there's Dale Blaney as well as down there. I and mean, there's just mm-hmm. a lot going on right now well, um, down there with Donnie Schatz. Um, you know, like you guys said, 26 to 4th. I mean, that, was, that, that, sounds, that sounded like a masterful drive to watch. Uh, last year, but you know he's coming in here, no pressure. He could just go out there, win, and try to add to his win total this year. Well, you talk about uh, the Pennsylvania Posse, Logan Schuhart down here, Cody Dara, as you mentioned, Dylan Sisney from Port Royal is down here. Um, you, you, the list just goes on. Steve Buckwalter is here. Brent Marks is down here. You mentioned Greg Hodnett. I mean, there are just uh, Jason Johnson, Wayne Dededo. Uh, just numerous Pennsylvania representatives, Ryan Smith, Brock Zierfoss, um, both here as well. But I'll, I'm going to tell you what, Jacob, a driver that I'm keeping my eye on is Chad Kenmana because Kenmana and Trey Starks both ran the USCS doubleheader this past weekend here in town, Carolina mm-hmm. Speedway Friday, and down uh, at Cherokee Speedway in Gaffney, South Carolina on Saturday. Both of them ran really well, and I could see this being the type of weekend where maybe one of those guys pulls up and stomps on the big boys. It's possible, isn't it? And you talked about Trey Starks. He just went to the top of the board in the Group Not B surprising. qualifying session. Not the overall quick time. Swindell still has that, but Starks to P2 in the overall qualifying uh, list with a 12.682 in Jeff McCall's 23 machine. Rico Abreu's up there, 1281. And Tom, we were talking about uh, Rico sneaking in. He was in the second portion of the pit area earlier today. And, you know, he's always a threat. He was up in the top three in this in this race last year. And we thought, hey, he's got a shot at it. Didn't quite get it done, but it was fun to watch. Oh, anytime Rico Abreu is in a car on dirt, he is fun to watch. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it's so, uh, I don't think you could ever count Rico out. Uh, you know, Dale Blaney's here, Dave Blaney running a modified, um, you know, it's, uh, just an all-star lineup here in the, uh, in the sprint cars, Lucas Wolf, I forgot to mention is here as well. And of course, you know, all the usual suspects, including both Kinzer and Sammy Swindell and the wild child, Jack Hoddenshield and the, yeah, uh, Stuart Friesen, uh, doing double duty in, in wife, Jessica Zemkin's car. Yes. And remember Stuart pulled off an outlaw upset already this year at over Oshweken in Canada Speedway. Eh? at a Schweiken Speedway. And let me tell you, Stuart Friesen walked the dog last year on Saturday night in the super dirt car, big block show here. There is no reason to think that Stuart Friesen is not capable of walking away with at least one victory in the outlaw sprints this weekend. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. Well, Shane Andrews doesn't call him the high side hustler for nothing. And that's how he won that race last year was the fact that he went to the top side and made it work. Oh um, yeah. Just powered around everybody. He's in Jessica Zemkin, his wife's sprint car this weekend, running the big block modified as well. I think you have a chance to see him win in both classes at least once this weekend. We know he's good. We know he's got speed. He's won 32 times this year, including the Syracuse 200, the final one at the New York State Fairgrounds back in October. He'd like to add one more crown jewel to the list, Tom. The Canadian, I don't I don't know if we've ever had a Canadian national win at the World Finals. Stewie would like to change that. Yeah, Stuart Friesen, originally from Canada, now living in Sprakers, New York, uh, and a guy who it looks like may well be doing a whole lot of sprint car racing in 2016. So rumor has it he may be going Outlaws racing full time. The entire Outlaws tour, yeah. How cool would that be? It would be great. I mean, he's just such a natural in a sprint car, and you know, again, just a, a a fantastic field in all three divisions here. It, it, and then you go over to Concord on the pavement. It's the same thing in the past mm-hmm. South late models and the modifieds over there. Uh, you know, some of the best in that those types of racing. Uh, I mean, if Matt you're a Hirschman short track racing today. fan. Yeah. Well, and there again, you know, the modified 
division. Money Matt Hirschman. You got Tommy Barrett making his He's return back. to uh, to modified racing. Ryan Priest. So just a, I mean, if you're a short track racing fan and you're anywhere listening to this show within driving distance of Charlotte, North Carolina, you need to be here this weekend because there is some real entertainment going on. And I don't mean the kind of entertainment we've been talking about for the last three or four days of NASCAR. Right. This is real racing folks. <laughs> and it's going to be a blast. Uh, hey, now, don't offend the NASCAR crowd. Oh, I'm part of the NASCAR crowd. I know. I just had to slip that in. Every once in a while, you got to, you know, you you, you got to stir the, you know what. True. We, we got about 90 seconds. I want to give each of you one last crack at this because you mentioned NASCAR. Everything's bigger in Texas on Sunday. <laughs> and, of course, it's round two of the three-race round for the uh, Eliminator 8 in the chase for the Cup. Each of you, about 15 seconds. Tom, then Kyle. Does Joey Logano win to advance? Uh, we did our picks on Monday night. We couldn't all pick the same person. Right. So my answer is not based on my pick on the show. Not only can Joey Logano win Texas, he's going to win Texas. Because he will get in this chase. Because, well, because he's mad, but let's not forget, it wasn't too long ago we watched him at Charlotte and he just blew the field into the weeds. Texas equals Charlotte. In many ways, it's almost an identical copy of Charlotte Motor Speedway. Joey Logano gets it done. I just hope we don't see as bad as a race as Charlotte. I'm sorry I had to say that, but, um, you know, I think oh, the last... It was. Yeah, it was. You know, cause just because of the rules package, I just hope that we can get a little better race this time. Did not watch It'll be a uh, April's race, but um, I think Joey Logano goes out there and wins. Regardless of my pick, too, Tom, Joey Logano is focused. He's going to go out there, do a uh, similar Charlotte performance, and go out there and lock himself into Homestead. We're focused, too. We're focused on going and watching some more World of Outlaws World Finals racing, and that's what we're going to do right now. Checkered flag coming on tonight's uh, Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show, and we want to thank our partners at Stock Car Steel and SRI Supplies for helping to make this show possible. Visit them on the web at stockcarsteel.com or sri-supplies.com for all your shop supply and scrap metal needs. And right now, for Tom Baker, Steve Ovens, Kyle Magda, Big Mike behind the glass, and all of our staff at racechaseronline.com and the Performance Motorsports Network. I'm Jacob Zielman reminding you to keep it up on the cushion, but keep it off the wall until we meet again. And we'll see you at the racetrack if you're anywhere near Charlotte this weekend. Have a great racing weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Tonight's show is brought to you by Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and SRI Supply. For all of your racing needs, visit StockCarSteel.com and SRI-Supplies.com. Keep up with the latest motorsports news every day on Race Chaser Online. The Stock Car Steel SRI Motorsports Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.PerformanceMotorsportsNetwork.com A member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Inc., and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-hosts, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week for more great motorsports programming right here on the Performance Motorsports Network.